Hey, this is Rekindling Cichlids. I just re-released some of my videos. They were older, uh, about four years old. Some of them have some great footage on it, so you might want to check those out if you want to see some front toes that, you know, unfortunately may not be around anymore or that I've sold, you know, and, you know, so uh, check that out. They have some breeding action going on in there, so you can see them, the front toes is actually breeding, uh, different setups. You can see how my channel has evolved. I used to use just music and then I started narrating with a microphone. Uh, now I've done a little bit where I have an introduction and go to the footage of the actual fish. I appreciate all the thumbs up you've been giving to, to, to me on my Frontosa videos. Make sure you give the thumbs up on the Frontosa videos so I can uh, do more with my channel and I'll have uh, bigger setups for my Frontosa to be able to show you more uh, and so forth. Remember the big thumbs up. I got this specially made by my sister. Uh, good job, Kim. Thank you. Uh, my niece Kylie will hopefully help help on this, but uh, she does hold it up in a picture on Facebook. So give me the big thumbs up. I don't have a big thumb, so I need a bigger thumb to emphasize the importance of the thumbs up. So in this video, we're looking at does skittish fish affect frontosa breeding? Uh, I have a viewer and a Facebook friend that wanted me to touch base on skittish fish. Uh, and I'm going to give you my take on it. And I also, also want your take on it in the comments about skittish fish. Uh, what you've done to alleviate skittish fish. I got a few suggestions. Uh, but I can at least tell you how it affects frontosa breeding, which most people who have frontosas uh, dream of breeding their frontosas, and so I'll uh, touch base on you on how uh, skittish fish uh, affect frontosa videos and breeding. All right, check out this video, and here we go to the footage. All right, let me give you an introduction to this fish. This is Herman. He's a uh, Massive alpha male. He's about eight years old. He's bred with about three or four females. Done very well. Um, he's a sturdy fish. He's been transferred to multiple aquariums, which I don't advise doing unless you have to. It does stress them out. Uh, in this aquarium, of course, is Changer. She's in the cave, which I'll be feeding here. He's fishing in the video, so you'll be able to see both the fish in action. So the topic is, uh, does skittish fish uh, affect frontosa breeding? Yes. So let me give you some of the reasons why a skittish fish would affect a frontosa breeding. Well, I've walked up on my frontoses before when they were not comfortable with me, when the, uh, there wasn't as much activity around them to make them less skittish. And if they're in the process of breeding, they can actually stop the process of breeding because you walk by the aquarium. Now, if they're not as skittish, they'll keep on track and focus in on what you know their activity and uh, things will go well so just you know like, like maybe your your cat could uh, walk by in front of an aquarium or you know different things uh, so skittish fish uh, can you know stop breeding if you walk by them uh, also skittish fish I, don't, I think do not have as good appetites uh, a lot of times they'll leave uneaten food uh, because they're, you know, they won't come out when there's people around and so forth. So this can affect the breeding of your fish. Also, if your fish are skittish, uh, they can uh, bump into an ornament, hit the top of the glass of the aquarium uh, because you walk by. Uh, this can injure them and it'll slow the, the health of the fish because they have to reheal, and this will affect your breeding. Healthy fish are the ones that breed, so it can affect your, you know, your breeding process. So as far as feeding, 
Uh, you know, you want your fish to have the utmost of nutrition when breeding. If they're skittish, uh, they may not go for the food as well. Uh, definitely, in my experience, if you have skittish fish, it will not go uh, for the food as, as apt as they will if they uh, are, you know, more comfortable in your aquarium. So, some of the things that I, I you know, I've used to do uh, less uh, skittish fish in my fish is to make sure I have my aquarium in a high traffic area. Now, if you have a big aquarium, you're not going to move it just because I give you a, a tip to, hey, have it in a high traffic area so your fish will be less, you know, skittish. So, another method, which you may not be able to do this method, but it's a method I know will work for sure, absolutely for sure, will work, but it may not be uh, uh, available to all of my viewers. If you take a TV, have it close to the aquarium, and have it on all the time when you're at work or whatever for several weeks, all the movement on the TV, the flashes and so forth, will make your fish eventually get used to all the activity in front of the aquarium and they'll be less skittish. Now this may not be available to everyone that's watching this video, that's why I'm asking for suggestions that you use to reduce the skittishness of your fish in your front toeses. Now you also can add uh, fish to your aquariums, different fish. Uh, now, if you're wanting to you you know to breed your fish, you may just have the fish in there for for a while to get them to eat better. Because if you add fish, they seem to have like a, a competition mentality, and they'll actually go for the food better. Uh, they'll become less skittish. And then, if you're wanting to breed your front toeses, it's best to take out those fish because they can. You know, the front toes is not very fast in their breeding process. They can go and eat the eggs, and then you'll have no, uh, you know, fry in the end. So think about, you know, your process. Is your goal to breed your fish or just to have them and look at them majestically like, you know, Herman is here. Let me focus in a little bit better here. Uh, Herman's looking great. So is your goal breeding? So if your goal is breeding, you may want to have your fish in there for a while. You see that uh, that uh, front toes is to the age and and the size for breeding. Now, as far as the age, I've had a male that was only two years old breed. Uh, so there's different ideas on how old your fish need to be to breed. Most of the earlier. Uh, information on a hat on uh, front toes was they had to be very old well I was successful with a two-year-old male but the female was a little older but she was like three so in this case changer is three years old uh, they've been in aquariums with other fish uh, that made them more uh, apt to be at see I'm right in front of the aquarium and Herman used to not do this he's out and he's looking at me and everything and he's out checking me out and he's wanting food uh, a lot of times in the past he would stay in his cave so now he's more uh, apt to be out because in the past you may have not seen the videos because I didn't show him he was in aquariums with other fish other than front toes. so let me take time just to feed these two uh, important fish it's got uh, Herman and Changer and what I'm feeding today is raw deveined uh, shrimp. Uh, make sure you check, you know, your aquarium after you feed, because this guy will binge. He'll eat more than he can get in his stomach, uh, and then he'll have to let some of it go back out. Now, not all of it. He doesn't have an issue. He just like a human. If you put too much food in your stomach, it's not going to always stay there. So make sure you, you regulate how much food you put in there. And then recheck after an hour or so to make sure that all of it was in the stomach and staying there. So let's uh, do some feeding. Ow, the shrimp. 
trip I've got here, I've had thawing out with some water. You might want to break it up into pieces. It's easier for him to chew. Now see, he'll probably hog all the shrimp. Like gulp it all in, more than he can really handle in the stomach. And then, what little bit comes back out, uh, changer will eat up from the ground. So make sure you check after you're feeding a high protein food because this is shrimp and if you leave uneaten food in there, then it's like having a dead fish in the aquarium. And it can pollute your aquarium very fast. So make sure you take out the uneaten food. You don't have to take it out immediately. Especially if you have catfish or any type of scavenger fish, uh, they will take care of that. Uh, snails will eat some of it, but they don't eat it fast enough, so I would think by the next day you definitely want to have all the uneaten food out of there. Look there, there's Changer eating a big gulp. She's fattening up, things are looking good for them to breed. Uh, I thank you for watching Ricky Kelly Cichlids. Make sure you give the thumbs up. Let me take a moment to give you a view of the thumbs up again. Alright, if you watched uh, my last Frontosa video, I told you about how after right after they eat, uh, they'll breathe a little bit harder, they'll do a little bit more mouth movement uh, when they have food in their mouths and in their bellies. Uh, this has just been 10 seconds after eating. That's what Herman's doing. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my front toes of videos and want to see more of them. Thanks for watching Ricky Kearney Cichlids and until next time.